Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Clinic Gym Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Josh Satterley, and it's my pleasure today to be joined by, by Jeff Salzenstein from Tennis Evolution. Jeff, how are you, my friend? I am doing amazing, Josh. Uh, thank you so much for being on your podcast today. I know we met a couple of years ago, and uh, glad we're reconnecting and that we can share some time together. Yeah, I am too, man. Uh, you, you definitely are an impressive human. Uh, I enjoyed learning from you in the Racket Fit Seminar, which everybody listening should sign up if you want to work with tennis players in your area. Jeff is a national instructor for that program and one of the board members, actually, right? Or the, the uh, advisory board members. Yeah, uh, you know, Greg Rose, I met him two and a half years ago with TPI, and uh, he watched me speak at a, at a world conference at the USPTA, sat down for breakfast the next day, and he said, listen, I've watched your YouTube videos watch your online content. I just saw you present. I think you should be our lead technical advisor. So essentially I, at, for racket fit, at least I teach the, the technical portion of it. So anybody that's a medical professional or fitness professional that doesn't know anything about tennis, totally intimidated. You come in for two days with us. You're going to learn a lot about technique and how it works and be able to speak the language. Yeah. All that your job is there is to take people who have absolutely no knowledge about an incredibly technical sport and make them understand it within the two day weekend. So how hard could that be? <laughs> well, thankfully, Greg has done a great job uh, over at TPI of making it easy in a couple of days to learn it, uh, to learn these concepts. And I'm just, I'm riding their coattails and bringing my 40 years of knowledge in the game of tennis uh, to be able to, to help people get it. Yeah. Well, I want to cover a little bit about, about your background in tennis. And I want to give those listeners out there wondering why we have a <laughs> tennis dude on the podcast. We're talking about gyms and clinics, but here's the deal. Jeff has put together one of the, the biggest uh, uh, online training programs in the world of tennis. He's put that together and refined it and refined it and refined it. And as I told you, Jeff, I got a lot of people listening who are interested in putting together an online program. And uh, instead of having them pay the daily tuition to uh, the University of Hard Knocks, which I know you have a PhD in, uh, I want to see what lessons you could possibly share with us because you are trying to teach an incredibly technical sport through an online platform. And those of us who are looking at the clinic gym model might be trying to teach relatively complex things like exercise and whatnot through an online platform. But I think you have a lot of lessons to share with us. So I appreciate your time today, but let's start with this. How the heck did you end up creating a massive tennis program? Take us back to the early days of of uh, young, uh, young Jeff there who is holding a racket probably too large for him and how to go yeah. from there to teaching. So yeah, this is a great, great segue for me to tell a quick story. I'd like to start with a story and the scene I want to take everyone into is, uh, it's 1997. It's the second round of the U S open. I'm playing in front of 24,000 people in Arthur Ashe stadium. It's the second round against world number two, Michael Chang. It's a night match on USA network. John McEnroe on the call, and I'm a six foot one, 175 pound lefty fireballer with a huge serve. And uh, I've got set point on Michael Chang in the first set. And I hit my wide slice, serve out wide, pulled him out off the court. He got, he got the ball back. I stretched for an angle backhand volley that was just out of his reach, and I won the first set. And the crowd absolutely erupted. This was my moment to shine. 24,000 people, millions of people watching on a Friday night, Labor Day weekend. This is it. This is the, the dream, right? This is the dream. And um, I remember backpedaling with a big smile on my face and I was looking at my box and there were, you know, 20 people in my box. My parents, uh, fraternity brothers from Stanford, um, my coach, uh, my ex-girlfriend who now wanted to be my girlfriend again because I was playing <laughs> this match. And uh, I smiled and she saw I, you on USA network and quickly drove down to Arthur Ashe yeah. for the week. She was living in New York at the time. So for the week, she was my girlfriend. She loved every minute of it, getting the box seats. But um, I remember smiling to my box and I tell people that's when the match ended. Like, what are you talking about? And I said, well, the match ended because the dominant thought inside my head in, in that moment was or during leading up to that match that day was whatever you do Jeff don't embarrass yourself mm -hmm. and I ended up losing an entertaining four set match I won the first set lost the next three sets and found myself um, the next day signing with IMG the agents were all over me 
Um, but it's a little bit about belief system in that I had the belief to get to that moment, but not the belief to beat world number two. And, and it's this dichotomy. It's this con contradiction that we all have as high performers that there's a side of us that's, that, that are high achievers. And then there's this other side that doesn't believe. And we have to constantly keep working on that and being aware of where our limitations are. And that might speak to some, some of you listening right now where you might feel you know you can do it, but there's something holding you back. And so I signed with the IMG the next day. And I was supposed to be the next great American, the next top 50 American. Oodles of talent oozing out of me. I went to Stanford. I won two national titles. I played number one singles. Uh, but the interesting thing is I was never supposed to be a pro tennis player. I grew up in the tennis hotbed of Colorado, which is not a hotbed. Uh, it's a skiing hotbed. And no one from Denver comes out of, you know, no one, no one from Colorado comes out and plays uh, pro tennis at the level that I did. It just doesn't happen. And so I'm kind of an aberration like that on many levels. But three months after I signed with IMG, I came down for a rebound playing pickup basketball in Denver. And I felt a sharp pain in my ankle. And that ankle pain was, uh, ended up being mis misdiagnosed. They put me in a boot. They said it was a stress reaction. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. Nine months passed. My ankle's still not right in and out of the boot. And finally, I had a bone spur removed in New York by Dr. David Olchek, who was the New York Mets doctor at the time. Six months la after that, I made a comeback, and I felt a click in my knee. And I had a surgery three months after that. So I lost two years right after I had this big moment, uh, and I was ready to shine. And I lost two years at the age of 24, 25, because my body was failing me. And that's when I went on my journey to uh, peak performance. I wanted to understand why my body was breaking down, why I didn't believe in myself in that moment against Chang. Uh, I studied everything under the sun you could think of, nutrition, mindset, physicality, technique, uh, movement, strategy. I just became an absolute sponge. And so that started at 24 and I'm 46 now. So we're over 20 years of digging deep into the most holistic, out of the box, cutting edge training methods. And that's why I really like chiropractors a lot. I love you guys. I love, I love the medical professionals and the fitness professionals that have that holistic uh, perspective. So I know my story is getting a little long here and we're going to talk business eventually, but I want to round this thing out. So I make the comeback at 26 and I start over. I'm 800 in the world. I start over at 26, no support from anybody except, you know, my family was supporting me. They wanted me to follow my dream if that's what I wanted. Was that Found a girl couple. still your girlfriend? No, she was long gone what? because, of, you know, the surgeries, you know, they were all gone. But, she went with Chang that night? <laughs> uh, no, didn't even go with him either. Uh, but uh, so uh, at 26, I make the comeback. And at 29, I qualified for the U.S. Open. I was the only American to qualify for the U.S. Open. At 30, I broke the top 100 in the world. I was deadlifting 400 pounds at a body weight of 165. I was jumping 28 inches for, you know, a white guy from Colorado. It's not too bad. Mm -hmm. Tennis player. Yeah, 30 years old was considered old in 2004. Now it's considered young. Thankfully, uh, you know, cutting edge trends are, are, are more popular. But I was already experimenting with green drinks and out of the, uh, out of the box, you know, uh, training methods. And I was kind of, I would say I was a bit of a maverick ahead of the curve. And so, that sets the stage from when I walked away from the game at age 33. Uh, I started coaching tennis and I did that for a couple of years. And I got this idea that, listen, I don't want to just help the 25 people, 25 kids and families in Denver with my tennis coaching, with this high performance program. I want to get my content out to the world. And so I started making videos with a flip cam. I had no business I plan. About those. I had no concept of what I was doing. I started making these videos and putting them on YouTube and uh, that's how, and then I got into a coaching program to learn internet marketing, digital marketing. That was back in 2009. So we're on 11 years now. And I launched my first online course at the end of 2011. So we're, we're on a decade now in the online space. And uh, what a journey it's been. And so I think my life has just been a culmination of from junior to college to pro to tennis coaching to entrepreneurship. It's been this one, the one thread has been curiosity, perseverance, and just trying to be an innovator. And, and that's, that's where we're at today. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm glad because uh, the fact that you're a lifetime student will help those listening, uh, again, avoid some of the pitfalls of the, the world of online coaching and whatnot. Sure. Um, before we go any further, if people want to find stuff out about you and their, 
they want to see your videos, they want to find your programs, where can they go? If they love tennis, they can go to tennisevolution.com. Uh, I've got plenty of free videos there. We sell premium content. Once you get on your on my email list, you'll get shameless plugs and pitches pretty much every day. We, we yeah. have an email that goes out every day. But I've also got a, a very popular YouTube channel. That's how I got my start. Started making YouTube videos. We've got about 15 million views now, about 70,000 subscribers. We're not even the biggest dog in the fight with the, with the YouTube channel. But what I'm most proud of, Josh, is that if you read the social proof and you leave the comments when there's so much, in, and, and people listening will relate to this, there's so much BS out there. There's so much misinformation out there. But when you look at the comments and people say, like, I'm the real deal, my stuff is 10 times better than other people's, that's not me saying it. It's the, it's the real live con, you know, comments that come back. And that feels really good because that's my life's work. That's my passion. That's my 40 years of being in the sport that I'm giving back. And and certain amount of people are recognizing that. And so even though we're not the most popular and we're not the biggest, uh, I like to think that there were the most respective and the most respected and that we're giving out the best content. Very cool. Love it. Yeah. So, uh, man, there's a lot to unpack here. So if we take the, the idea that some of the folks listening want to start scaling their ability to help more people uh, by developing online assets, Right. So you have a, let's say you have a young doctor who has a, a single room, 10 by 10 office, uh, doesn't have the space to do exercise, doesn't have the space to do a whole lot and wants to, to provide uh, ideas and, and training and rehab for his patients. Uh, let's start moving forward from that perspective. And those who are listening that have the space, that's even better. I think the blend of kind of online uh, programs along with personal uh, engagement in person is great. Um, if you can't do in person, video calls is great. Um, and then that's all supported by the, the social media kind of net that's thrown out there. Right. But let me start with this question. So you had a ton of videos on YouTube, which is awesome, providing great content. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times that helps you develop that list. How did you start transitioning from, Hey, here's a video. Anybody can watch it. Anybody can use it from that to, Hey, here's the stuff you actually have to pay for. Hmm. Yes. Yeah. So, so when I started, I started making all these videos. And like I said, I got a coach that taught me the ins and outs of internet marketing. So, uh -huh. you know, the type of website to build, how to, how to create your ethical bribe or your opt-in. Essentially, you're giving a free gift away in return for an email address. Uh -huh. um, I started hiring people on uh, Upwork, which is a contractor site where I started hiring virtual assistants to help me with admin work. Uh, I learned about what it takes to do a product launch. So how to take people on a journey before they actually buy the product. And that's how I first started. So I was able to get, you know, 500 or 700 email addresses. And then when I decided to launch my first course, I went out to all the big dogs in my market who knew me um, from my tennis days and the coaching I was doing. And they were willing to send emails to their big 100,000 person lists. And I got two or three big fishes to email in exchange for a 50% commission. I wasn't worried about making the money. I just wanted to get the exposure and build my list. And we did that. And it was a $57 course. I remember the upsell was a $37. It was on the forehand. I was teaching the techniques of the forehand, 57 bucks. And uh, it wasn't put together that well. And I remember I never sold anything online. And this is in the Wild West. So I'm not. Yeah, not take us back. So let's see what's going to happen. Yeah. What, what year roughly is this? This is 2011. So I started making YouTube videos in 2009. So it was a full year and a half before I even launched a course. So and you had a ton of um, legitimacy because of those videos. The videos, that, the YouTube yeah, videos. Yeah, I mean. It's really easy. I mean, people, I mean, people say, well, I was former top 100 in the world. I broke the top 100 in the world at the age of 30, the oldest American to do that for the first time. So I'm pretty much putting that tagline every time I make a video, like former top 100 ATP. Yeah. So it's instant credibility, but the content has to be good. I mean, if the content's crappy, it doesn't matter what my credentials are. So yeah. it helped get my foot in the door. But yeah, I, I, I was making a bunch of videos. People were starting to notice, but really just sending the emails out uh, through this, these big databases initially. Um, and again, this is the wild, wild west, 2011, when people, this is pretty, pretty new. You know, there was no Instagram then. YouTube was kind of coming onto the scene. And um, 
I, I, I basically rolled out three free videos over the course of a week, video one, video two, video three, and provided a lot of value and a lot of content and kept building and building until the following week when I said, okay, the, the doors are open, you can buy this course. And literally they like gobbled off the digital, they just were like taken off the digital shelves. Like it was like gangbusters. This is like we, the old days of blockbuster video where you go in to see the new release and it was just open wood shelves. Unbelievable. Like literally we sold $25,000 in the first day. Of a minutes. product that at most would, if you bought both, it, the upsell would still be under a hundred dollars. Yeah, exactly. Right? Like, I mean, average order value was 65 bucks and we did like 25 K in the first day. We did like 50 K in a week. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, this is crazy. I can't believe this works. <laughs> now here's what's interesting. I did another launch, uh, eight months later on a $200 course on the serve, the tennis serve secrets. And we did like a hundred K with a relatively small list. And again, I thought I died and gone to heaven. Now, mm -hmm. since 2012, I, can, I continued to launch through about 2015. I didn't even come close to those numbers. So it was almost like a perfect storm where it just, mm -hmm. like it just told the floodgates open for me. There was only like two right. or three competitors in the marketplace. Now there's 1,500. So it's definitely more competitive now. There's more saturation now. It's harder to just sell something online um, but that was really cool to give me the confidence that I could do this. And that's yeah. when I went full time with the online and, um, you know, a lot of things have changed since then, but there's still some fundamental principles that are, that are common. And so for someone, as you described in that 10 by 10 room, I'm assuming this person, I'm hoping this person's not burnt out yet. I'm hoping this person is still is feeling like passionate about what they do. Oh, I mean, yeah. I know, right. And they're passionate. And so what you want to do is, my suggestion would be if you could, especially with Instagram now, I would start pumping out Instagram content as much as possible and give, give your best stuff away. Like don't hold back. Like my best stuff is on YouTube. Okay. So let's, let's yeah. dive into that. Cause I, that's yeah. a common thing that a lot of people do is they say, I don't want to give away. So you're teaching the serve, right? And you probably yeah. have a dozen tricks that no one else teaches about yeah. the serve, right? Yeah. And so the common thought is, okay, don't give out, make them buy the 12 secrets to the serve and give away the basics of stance and you know how to hold your racket and blah blah and you're saying no no do the opposite like take the best nuggets right and be like hey uh let me give you this so if you if i went to a barbecue joint and they're known for ribs you're saying give away a free rib to everybody that comes in like hey hey you want to come in try this rib don't be like hey here's a free piece of cornbread that we serve with every with every meal right yeah, and it's tough for a lot of people that are new to the online space because I hear this a lot when they're rookies. They're like, I don't want to give away my best stuff. And I'm like, well, you, good luck. It's not going to work. Um, now, there is like you could, like I, I have one coach, a marketing coach that actually does think I'm giving away too much stuff. <laughs> but it's almost like it's too late now because I've already, I already have 700 videos on YouTube where I've given my best stuff away. It's done. Right, right, right. So I'm kind of like, and I decided to do a test in the last year. I, I kind of had a little bit of that scarcity mindset where I was like, eh, I don't want to give all my best stuff away. But then I was like, forget about it. Like, honestly, I'm not, I'm not crushing it as I mean, I'm, I do pretty well online, but definitely I'm not at the level that I thought I would be. If someone would have told me eight years ago, I would be like where I'm at right now. I would have thought that I would be further along, but that's kind of like building a house or, building a practice. Like it always takes a little bit right. longer and you're going to have these roadblocks and these, right. and I can tell get into all the reasons why it hasn't worked at the level I thought it would. But I just started like making, like I'm kind of known as the serve surgeon. Like I'm the guy who knows how to help people with their serves. Um, that's what I was known for as a player. That's what I've studied intimately as a coach. And so I've got these videos on YouTube that are as good, if not better than the actual courses. Well, so, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I think that one thing, one aspect of, of the online program uh, or in education in, in general is I don't think there's anything, for example, let's look at SFMA, which you're familiar with, right? Yeah, yeah. I look at the SFMA and I think a lot of people on, on the listening here are familiar with it. I don't think there's anything in there that is not published on YouTube. Like YouTube has probably 20 videos about everything in there, but the difference, it's not organized in the way that so your serve information just reorganizing the original existing videos is worthwhile 
and then setting up the proper situation of when to do X versus Y. There is no shortage of information, but what there is a shortage of, what's the, what do they say? Uh, the difference between knowledge and wisdom. Knowledge is knowing that tomato is a fruit and wisdom is knowing not to put it in fruit salad. Like that's a lot of what you can provide people with these online programs. So people listening, take any videos or any content you already have, but maybe reorganizing it is what your clients are looking for. Exactly right. And here's the thing. People are so just, dis- now that it, let's say you're on Instagram or YouTube and you release a serve video on Monday and the following week you could re- I release a video on the forehand and then the following week it's something on strategy and then let's say four or five weeks later I release another video on the serve they're not going to be able to piece this all together and they're not going to remember it anyway so what's going to happen is they're going to get these little taste tests or these solutions into your YouTube or your Instagram and you're going to be like oh my gosh this person is they really know what they're talking about. They're giving away their best stuff. I wonder what their I wonder what their course is like. It must be even better. So there's this perception that it's better. Number one, it's organized, like you you mentioned, and um, you're building that trust that you're willing to give. And when you're willing to give, oftentimes people are willing to give back. Now there are people out there. They're going to be tire kickers, and they're only going to be on YouTube or Instagram. They're never going to give you their credit card. But when I, when I decided to go all in and just give everything away with YouTube in the last year or two, I just noticed my revenue and it did not change. It didn't go down. Okay, if anything, it went up a little bit. It did not go down. And so people are just distracted and they're going to get the organization and they're going to want to, they're going to, want to have it in one portal in one place. And that mm-hmm. we might segue, we can segue a little bit now. You can bring me back if you want. But you introduced me to Troy Broussard who has an app and for those of you out there trying to figure out ways, and, and I'm not, you know, endorsing Troy only because, no, we should, because I believe this that, podcast is sponsored by Membrane. <laughs> well, there we go. Let's let's yeah. sponsor Membrane. But I'm not in that. It's not like I'm getting a cut by me saying how awesome Troy's uh, app right. is. But here's the deal. Everybody's on their phone. Okay. So if everyone's on their phone five hours a day and you're touching this thing 5,000 times a day, if they're there, you might as well go where they're at. And so if you're using an app, like I'm using the Membrane app, we launched the Tennis Evolution app to rave reviews this past year. You're the the chiropractor or the fitness professional that has your own branded app and you have your content there and you have your courses and you have your free content and you have your premium content that's locked behind the paywall. I tell you what, I mean, this is where it's at. So that's, that's where you can, you want to be a, you want to leverage yourself and separate yourself from the pack getting an app, getting, having an online platform and having your videos and your content behind a premium paywall is the way to go. Even if it, you're not necessarily selling that course for $47, just having your right. content and offering your coaching services is the way to go. So I want to do, go back a little bit and define yes. some things here because you are an expert speaking a uh, hundred miles a minute. <laughs> yeah. So <clears throat> let's go back. When you're talking about a course, yes, can you identify for those listening what a course is? So you have your online content, which you're just pumping out. uh, I don't say willy nilly, but with some three, three, three videos a week right now on YouTube, which is a Uh lot. Uh And I'm fortunate; I have a video editor that I hired that's that that lives in uh, that lives in Croatia. So you know, I able to get which is a great location for online. If you guys ever look on Upwork for some reason, technology. Uh, bloomed in Croatia. And there seem to be a lot of very talented individuals there. A little tip here. If you want people on the tech side, like on web programming, or if you want, um, if you want the video, you go over to Serbia, you go to Eastern Europe. They're really, really sharp. I've got a guy from the Ukraine. I've got Croatia. I've got Serbia. Then I have four full-time people in the Philippines. And your dollar goes really far in these places too. Yeah. So if you want, if you want to hire your first virtual assistant, I helped my brother who's just starting his online business. His first technical is not even employee, but contractor is a guy from the Philippines that I introduced him to. And I've got four full-time people, just a four, four full-time people in the Philippines helping me because I'm not an admin person. I can't do any of that stuff. Um, so so uh, leveraging, leveraging that is, is very important. So three videos a week on YouTube. You've got to be consistent with your content. I know with Instagram, 
I think if you ever want to grow your following, you've got to do it like pretty much daily, which has been tough for me to wrap my head around. Um, but when it comes to, so when it comes to a course, essentially what you're going to do is I have different courses that are, some are, I have a foundation, I have foundation courses and mastery courses and the foundation courses are smaller, might be about 25 videos, um, three modules. So, so about eight course, videos though, is a yeah. series of videos that a, you have to have some version of access. You pay for access or Jeff gives you access, but no, the general public doesn't just get to go look at them. That's right. They're organized in a specific order. Hey, watch phase one videos first, phase two, phase three. That's right. And they're essentially pre-recorded and locked off. I'm meaning they're, That's right. they're their own thing. They're not going to keep growing. Typically you would, you might refine them or launch a version 2.0, but yeah, you have this thing just like you're selling a book. This is a textbook on the serve. You could build another textbook later, but this one costs $47. Yeah. I put them, I put the videos, I host them on Vimeo. Uh, I have download links. They can download mm -hmm. them through Amazon S3. So again, people say, why do you let them download it? They can pay for it and then ask for a refund. I'm like, fine. If they want to do it, they can. Like, I don't, I don't live in that fear-based mindset of scarcity of like refunds and people are going to take my stuff and whatever. None of that. I just make my stuff. If they go to my order form and they buy it, they get their login and password. I've got about a five to 10% refund rate. It hasn't changed for eight years. You're always going to, you're going to always have hooligans that do that. Don't even waste your time on that stuff. Just make your course, put it in an organized fashion module step by step, make it logical uh, put your own unique uh, signature on it. And, um, you know, you can use different um, platforms. Like I use ClickFunnels for a long time, which is for sales pages and even membership sites. But we're now moving on to a membership platform called Membarium, which actually integrates with that Membrant app that we talked about earlier. So everyone can yeah. watch my content on the so, app and in, yeah. in something like Membrant, uh, Membrant. I mean, sorry, Membarium. Are you interested in becoming a better provider for musculoskeletal conditions? Well, if you know me, you might've seen me out on the road, but I totally believe in, I love, I adore the SFMA, the Selective Functional Movement Assessment. It is a fantastic way of assessing the movement-based uh, dysfunctions in your patients. Now, why movement? Because movement has to do with motor control, and that's usually the first sign that pain is gonna develop. And it's a better, more reliable method than assessing pain. So if you're interested in using a movement-based diagnostic system as part of your intake protocol, I would highly recommend the SFMA. Plus, they've got the best instructors. I'm one of them. So I make it fun. I'm easy to listen to. And, well, I don't know about that, but I enjoy teaching it, and it's a fantastic course. I recommend it. So check out functionalmovement.com and look for an SFMA course near you. Functionalmovement.com. Look for an SFMA level one coming to your area. Hope to see you there. So Jeff is a high-end user, and so there's certain controls that you want or certain abilities. If we're talking about lower end, did you ever do anything on like Kajabi or I'm trying to think of Learnistic or any of these other, um, I mean, these I other use, programs that are kind of an all-in-one baby's first membership platform? But in the world of fitness, I don't know if you know like True Coach, Train Heroic, all those allow you to record videos, sell them, they'll collect the payments for you. And then you can share those with your clients. They don't offer nearly the power that you're talking about in these other programs, but they also aren't as complicated where you have, you know, ClickFunnels doing pay portal, Infusionsoft doing organization, Membarium allowing access, and then, you know. Yeah. I mean, for me, I never wanted to put my stuff on another, a third-party platform. I wanted to brand me. And I knew right. I wanted to do that. And I would advise anyone, sure, you can start slow and start on a third party platform. But I would advise someone to if they really are like serious about this, they should brand themselves, they're going to be the go to person, they get a, a, a cheap Word, WordPress website, and they hook up uh, the Membarium plugin. I know there's mm -hmm. some stuff. But you, again, you could post a job on Upwork and say, you know, I need help integrating blah, blah, blah. And again, I know your people listeners, I'm sure if they emailed you, uh, and asked you like how to get started, you could mm -hmm. lead them to some, to some software technology to help them. Um, so I would advise yeah. someone try to brand themselves. Yeah. And I think Jeff brings up a good point. If we're talking and you're like, man, I really had this idea. I thought it was going to work, but what they're talking about is way too complicated. It's not that complicated. You decide you can basically go to Upwork or Fiverr, find somebody to build a membership site for you 
and literally throw $250 at that person and they will jump through a million hoops and get it all set up for you. It's not a big deal, but the power that you'll get once you have that up and going is unbelievable. Yeah. And another, you know, my favorite, one of my favorite coaches, um, I have two amazing coaches and they're absolutely free. Um, it's this thing called Google. <laughs> and if you actually go to Google and say how to create, you know, an online membership and start reading about, you know, kind of the recommendations and the reviews, mm -hmm. uh, that's probably a good place to start. And this other free coaching, uh, this, this one of the best coaches in the world. Um, his name is Mr. YouTube. And I literally go to YouTube and you could type in how to create a membership site, what software to use. And yeah. it's all right there. And you can be, I mean, you're, if you're listening to this, you're probably pretty smart. You know, you got your practice, you're intelligent. Uh, you can go and learn this stuff just by a little bit of doing a little bit of due diligence. And then I'm kind of like a, I'm a good detective. So like if I go to YouTube or Google and find a couple things, then I can maybe go like ask someone like, Hey, have you heard about this? Or I just kind of know how to like finagle my way to the solution. Mm -hmm. And that's how you have to look at it. You can't come into the mindset like this is too hard. This is too complicated. I'm not good at tech. I am not good at tech. I'm telling you, people think I'm good at tech now because I've been doing it for 10 years. I'm not even a tech guy. I don't build my membership sites. Other people do it for me. You go make your money in your practice. You charge your 100, 100 a session or 200 a session or 80 a session, whatever your number is, and you, and you work 60 hours a week doing that, and you take that money and you hire someone to do that. You don't get in the weeds and build it yourself. Don't do that. That's my recommendation. Don't do any of that stuff. Don't learn it yourself. <laughs> work, work, work your hours and use that yeah. money to pay for it. No, I mean, I think we could both agree that Greg Rose might be one of the smartest dudes that we've ever met in our life. And how did he solve the problem of technical, uh, understanding the technical nature of, of tennis for a uh, racket fit? He went and found the guy. That's right. right. And that's he, said, he said, I understand the body. Yeah. I understand mechanics. I understand the golf swing show me how it relates to tennis. And then we just started breaking it down. And he literally, yeah. he could have studied that himself for 20 years and he wouldn't know what I know. Right. So, and so the, he, and yeah. He realized to go farther, faster, talk to Jeff and boom, problem solved. So find That's those right. Serbians or Croatians or Filipinos that are uh, unbelievable at this stuff and yeah. fairly affordable. All right. So, uh, so somebody, they get the tech, they get their first membership site set up. Take us back to, you launch those programs. Take us back to one of your launches. You launch it and everybody thinks, man, I'm going to launch this program you know, first day we do 25 grand. Let me do some quick internet marketing math. That means that every month <laughs> Jeff was bringing home a hundred to $200,000. And it's I been wish. like that ever since. I wish just off that I first wish. launch. I'm not talking about this. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah, ones that came after that, but yeah, no, I mean, again, I had a hot start. So I did a lot of things right in the beginning. Timing was right. I had one of my best years online in my second year ever, you know, so that was, I would like to say that, that was beginners, like not beginners luck. Cause I did, I hired two coaches. I invested in a mastermind. I paid one group about $18,000. I was paying another, I mean, I pay for coaching. So I've probably invest in over the course of 10 years, I probably invested about a half a million dollars into my education. So, you know, that's just me. I'm, that's how I try to fast track what we just talked about earlier, but it sounds like it worked for you in tennis and in life. It's so. working. I mean, I, I think I could have hired better coaches for me to be a better pro tennis player. I was, I didn't really understand this concept as a pro ironically enough. Um, but when I got into this world, I learned the power of mentorship and coaching. And so, um, so, you know, pretty good start out of the gate, but I like to tell people, you know, I'm being real and, you know, vulnerable and honest here. I was a great, you know, great out of the gate, but I had a sophomore slump. And the sophomore slump was me um, getting distracted because I have a tendency to focus on a lot of different things as this entrepreneurial mind. Um, and so I started focusing on the wrong things in my business. I started, I was distracted and it, and my revenue really uh, went down. Uh, my revenue didn't grow and I had to, you know, pick up, kind of pick up the pieces again. Um, and kind of rebuild. We rebranded. It was a different name. It was Jeff Salzenstein Tennis, and I didn't want Salzenstein on the name long term, so I branded it Tennis Evolution. And so simple to spell. I don't understand it. Exactly right. <laughs> so, so 2015, people didn't recognize Tennis Evolution. It was like I was almost starting over again. 
So I certainly am playing the long game, have been it for the long game. And when it comes to the online space, if you really want to grow it and be amazing at it, you've got to crack the paid traffic code. You can't just do it with organic. And so that's something that I've had a huge challenge. You know, it's essentially paying for on a Facebook ad or a YouTube ad, paying $1 to get $2 back if you can. And that's been a really hard for me to do in a market where my highest ticket item is 200 bucks. You know, I'm not selling a $5,000 coaching program. So for those that are listening, if you have a full-time practice and, and, and you, that's what you do, I wouldn't maybe, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that you go the route I did where you actually try to build this full online platform. Cause this is pretty much what I do. I do consulting. I coach some players when I feel, when I feel like it, but I'm not coaching 40 hours a week and then running this business. Okay. So I want to be really clear about that. If you have your practice and you want to get started, I think the best way to do it is to create some content, um, put it behind a membership platform, start making some content like I did on YouTube, put it on YouTube, Instagram, and make sure all your clients get access to that premium content, whether it's part of the program you develop for them, um, or it's an add-on, or maybe you charge extra for I, I You can figure out that pricing and how to do that. We could talk more about that if, if you want. Um, but that's how I would get going. And then what's really interesting is that you can do calls, uh, you can do coaching calls. So for example, um, if you work with someone to try to improve their mobility in their hip, um, I actually have a, a physical therapist friend of mine that does Skype calls all over the world. And so he has his thriving practice and he does these Skype calls with my clients that are in New Jersey or Florida, if they can't make it out to Colorado. And he, he actually gets them on the floor, uh, laying down, you know, positions the camera in a way and has them do a series of tests. And he can see if they're their hips, their rib cage, their shoulder is out of whack. Mm -hmm. And then he starts to prescribe the exercises right there. He's able to do that. So you could do, do that from, you know, you got to think like, what could I do from, you know, my living room that could actually provide value. And that's one thing. Another thing would be the coaching calls where you're, you're helping them with their health and their wellness. And, and you could even share your screen and show the videos you want them to do. I have people all over the world email me how I can help them with the coaching and I create custom programs where I'll charge them a premium for a month or two months or three months. I'll review their videos, their tennis videos, and I'll do analysis. And we get on coaching calls together and talk about their game. And that's where you can actually charge a premium. And that's the, I think the easiest way to start. So just to recap, you could sell a course, which is pre-recorded videos that yep. everybody's going to get the same thing. Whoever buys that course. Right. And if you sell the course and you try to like, go to your 2000 followers on Instagram, I, I believe it's going to be a hard sell. So you're spending a lot of time making the course, then you have to build your email list and do email marketing and know exactly what type of emails to write. And you have, and you're not going to make many sales organic. So that is not the way I would go starting yeah. out, not the way I did it. <laughs> um, but yes, that's one way. So then you can also, um, have a, uh, a series of what you're saying, coaching calls where I say, um, I say, Jeff, I know that you have some hip pain. Let's, let's analyze it. I want you to get on the ground and do this move. Right. And then I want you to show me how much your leg can move in this direction. And then let's find a fix for it. Right. So this is what your friend, the physical therapist does, yes. which is kind of, you could sell one of those. You could sell a series of one a week for 10 weeks. You could sell blocks of them. Um, and what you're saying too is in your world, it's good to get some interaction with the person. Hey, film your serve, film your forehand, your backhand, uh, show me X, Y, and Z, send me those, and then we'll break them down. We'll discuss you because people, customers love talking about one person and that usually is themselves, right? That's right. They want to see the video that Jeff has of them, not just the video Jeff has of himself at the U.S. Open. That's right. So, so exactly. And so the second version where uh, you, you get on coaching calls, what I like to do is I don't like, typically I don't like to do a la carte. I'll do it. I'll do a video analysis a la carte. Uh, but generally I like to create a customized program. So create a 90 day program or a six month program or a 30 day program. And like, let's say in the 30 days you get on two coaching calls you give them Voxer access where they can send you message. Voxer is an app mm -hmm. on your phone. You can at any time, 24-7, people can send me messages. 
Um, and you get on the coaching calls and you make sure they're on track with their program, whatever they're doing. And you charge a premium for that. Mm-hmm. Like that is a premium service and I'll, it'll be one price. It's not hourly. Um, you know, I'll set, it's a custom package. Um, so you can do that. And then, um, like you said, like for tennis players, I'll have them even send me match play. So they put their phone up on the fence or behind them and not just their stroke, because here's the thing. I used to do more of the stroke analysis, but listen, everyone can swing and hit a forehand when they're just standing there. I want to see what they do when they're moving. I want to see what's, what their shot selection is. And what I can do is I can review those matches now and say, listen, you see that forehand you hit on the run, wrong footwork, change your footwork there. They never would know that if they just gave me a static forehand off of a ball machine. So we get, we get so bought into technique and tennis, we forget that there's so much more to the game. Right. So as it relates to a chiropractor, again, maybe you could put them in the setting, whatever they're doing, whatever they're struggling with. Um, you know, there's, I'm sure there are ways that you could get creative to, to differentiate yourself from, from the pack. Yeah, I love it. And something like uh, one of the powers I always talk about of, mem- of uh, Membrant is when you have that custom app, you can select who's allowed in there and who's not. And so you could do this analysis and say like, all right, well, Jeff, obviously what you need is two things. You need hip mobility, and then you need to take our um, fundamentals of racket alignment. I- I'm just making something up, right? Yep. And now I can allow that person, I have those pre-recorded courses, and now I release some access to the to those courses and this one-on-one interaction. And that's where I think the courses become very powerful is when they're a solution to a problem that you diagnosed, you didn't just sell it to somebody offhand. You say like, Hey, uh, actually we have this, this, uh, this solution to what your problem is. And you might have a dozen of those. Yeah. I mean, there's, again, there's the private. And so again, if you don't want to go the, the website route, just look at getting the app And you have everyone consuming the content in the app because that's where everything is moving. Mm -hmm. And you have this app that's, you know, they have a habit tracker. They have all these things that you can do inside of the app. That's just, it creates that accountability. It creates um, the stick rate of like people wanting to do it when you have kind of that solution for them and it's custom and it's special and it's different and it's awesome. Well, we are a little tight on time, but I would love to cover this idea you just brought up. So you're perfect at segues. You're the serve surgeon and the segue surgeon, man. I mean, you just <laughs> know exactly where to cut it, you know? Let's, let's segue and let's serve. But, but in all seriousness, so let's say that we either have a course or we're doing these, e- these um, one-on-one evals for people or these interactions via Zoom or some other um, thing. We, we can provide a lot of content. We have our free content. But what have you learned? Because these, it's great to have these sales like you did, but as you yeah. I'm sure realize, and I've realized it is almost more stressful to have a ton of sales and then no sales than to never have had the sales in the first place. It's like, yeah, it's sure. funny how that works in the online world and to have those steady, you know, it's not just in the online world, but I think what a lot of people in this world don't understand is your interaction in the office with that person just skyrockets the trust. Unbelievable. Uh, and the problem with online sales or programs online is there is no trust. Every piece of it you have to build in and build in through free content, through great calls, through problem solving, through information. But <clears throat> you just said how to get your customer to stick around, right? How to yes. keep them as part working with you. So I want to make sure that we cover that as our last piece. What have you learned in this world of getting people to be long-term customers, not just a flash 47 bucks and they're gone? Right. So I want to go back to that trust, no, the no love and trust KLT factor. So because I have these videos for the last eight years on YouTube, I go anywhere in the world. And if I'm near a tennis court, there is a chance that someone is going to say, oh my gosh, I've watched your YouTube videos. Like there's literally like this star factor, uh, the celebrity, you create celebrity. You can be the celebrity in your area. You can That's why we do an audio podcast, Jeff. I didn't want people to get distracted by seeing your face and going, I've watched this guy on YouTube. You know, well, I mean, they'd just I be starstruck. I wouldn't even hear the information. I thought it was your dashing good looks that you were like, you know what? I can't, I need them to focus on Jeff today because they're constantly. As they say, me. I've got a face for radio Great and a face voice for, for radio. Print. 
Yeah. Yeah. So, there you go. Uh, <laughs> relying heavily on you today. We are just trying to get through this, but no, I mean, you, these videos, people, there's instant recognition. They, they, I've had it multiple times say, I feel like I know you already. Like the first time I ever meet them, it's the, I mean, again, it's just, it's the persona. It's the, it's the amazing part about online training and instruction. So that's huge. And then again, it's just this value add of like, you're different from the guy down the street or the gal down the street where now you're offering them these videos that the guy down the street's not doing and or the gal down the street's not doing so so they're constantly you're they're in your world more often and if they're watching your video once or twice a day you're building that relationship and i have people on my email list that have spent you know thousands of dollars they've purchased 15 or 20 courses and i would say the big reason why other than what i just mentioned is that the content is good it helps people get the result they want um, I'm genuine and real and my delivery is, is pretty solid. I mean, I, that's one of my strengths is communication and being able to break down a concept. So if you aren't great uh, in front of a camera, if you're not great with your communication, you've got to practice that. You've got to practice that skill. And just like anything, it's a skill. But being able to clearly explain something and break it down for people so they understand it is absolutely huge to get compliance to get people to take action and um the content is solid the breakdown is solid uh people stay with me because they they have that relationship with me and they feel like they can get results and you know customer service that's important i have a full-time customer service person so if there's refunds or there are issues or the logins you got to be able to get back to them i mean the biggest trouble i've gotten into is when people send me these nasty nasty emails about how bad our customer service is and so that doesn't feel good um a lot of times it's a misunderstanding sometimes it's someone on my team sometimes the email never got through or whatever mm -hmm. but uh, you know, having your customer I've had, <laughs> buttoned up is important. I had somebody spend a couple thousand dollars with me, and for whatever reason, these uh, these software programs are not a hundred percent reliable. And this time, it it did the part where it takes the money, but it didn't do the part where it tells me that they they spent money. And mm -hmm. so, here I am. Not I have no idea, and I get this real nasty email two days later. I spent two thousand dollars on your customer service, and I'm like, you know, I just had to apologize profusely. Like, I'm sorry, man, the, the program, you know, blah, blah, blah. People don't care. They already spent a right. thousand bucks. So they want service. So I had to, I, I think I made it up to that person, but that's certainly not how I want the relationship to start off. So yeah. One of the things I do, especially when like I get, I got criticized, I get criticized all the time. That's the other thing. That's an important point I want to bring up. The bigger you get, the more you get just bashed on. Like the mm -hmm. trolls come out. I don't care how genuine I, I am, how nice I am. YouTube people will like today I put out a YouTube video and one of the comments was like, it was like a biting comment. It was like the real video starts at the two minute mark. Uh, you're, you're welcome everyone because I hemmed and hawed for the first two minutes with the intro, but you know what I learned? I'm like, okay, maybe next time I got to get it down to a minute. So I look at that instead of getting bent out of shape, I look at it as just information to help me get better. Um, mm -hmm. I've had people totally complain about, the login or the program. And if I kill them with kindness with my email, I'm like, Hey, thanks so much for letting me know. Uh, you know, how can I make it up to you? Let me, it's just that whole thing. I've gotten people that are absolutely irate to flip on me in the next email and love me even more. Yeah. That's an important thing. To I think realize. that's Don't huge because personal. Th those people have energy. I mean, like you look at the trolls on YouTube. I don't, I don't know if I've ever really like made a comment on multiple YouTube videos. I never log in. I just kind of, you know, watch and I'm, chill and I'm like watch a video and they move on these people that have the energy to sit there and write these paragraph long scathing emails or comments about how poor it was they just have a ton of energy that they just don't know where to direct it <laughs> and if yeah. you can just get them to become loving followers of you it's they have all that energy in your favor so yeah. it's uh it's pretty cool so uh any other final lessons you, you you mind giving us about getting people to stick have you noticed that like you know giving uh people that are already customers and that maybe our customers, again, is it giving discounts or early access to stuff or throwing out a couple free evaluations or review their, their game film? What, what seems to tickle their feathers the most? So I'm not really great with all the discounts and stuff. We probably need to improve that for people that are already members. But I think um, that's a I'm, good point. Like people don't always expect a discount or want one. They, they want to feel like it's great content. Yeah. And, you know, and you're only, you're maxing out at 200 bucks. I, I can't imagine there's a lot of room for a discount there. No. And I think, you know, when I'm thinking about again, who's listening to this podcast and 
I, if you really want to have a presence online and you want to make more money, which I think people want to make more money mm-hmm. <laughs> and have more impact, the most successful business model online. So I want everybody to try to wrap their head around this. This most successful business model online is to sell premium coaching. So however you can create a package that's 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 5,000, maybe it's $10,000, you know, over the course of the year, whatever that is, that's where you should start because you want to get those big wins. You don't want to try to sell a million $47 products like I've tried to do. That's a hard thing to do to make a business <laughs> out of it. So what I would look at You've is, proven that that's difficult. I've proven you didn't it. You just guess. You have I'm proven a, it I'm time and time again. I'm in a hobby niche. I'm not in the, I'm not in the dating sex niche. I'm not in the financial niche. Um, I'm not in, yeah, I'm not relationship. Not in the build your business online niche. I'm not. So I'm selling four hands and serves and to, to you know, to sell, to, to sp- charge a lot of money is, is a hard thing to do with digital. So, so I would try to think about how you could create premium programs and create a coaching program online that maybe could even morph into group coaching. Like you start with one-on-one, you perfect your eight week system and you sell it for, you know, whatever, let's say 2,500 bucks. And then when you get 10 clients doing that, you bring them all into a group and you charge them each 2000 or 1500. I mean, that's the way to do it instead of trying to sell $47 courses. Don't spend six months making a $47 course and trying to peddle that thing. I'm telling you, unless you know that you want to maybe like, I would study a guy like Dr. Axe, who, who does all the supplements. If you want to get into supplements and try that, I mean, good luck. It's a, you know, I don't think the, the listeners here are going to go that direction. They're, they're more coaches. You know, they're, they have that kind of philosophy of helping people. I would, I would focus more on the high end coaching, but then when it comes to the content with the app or with a course, you just probably give the course away for free if they're a premium. Yeah, that's an add-on. It's not, you're not going to say, oh, I'm going to sell this now for 47 bucks to my current client. You're just going to give it to them and say, hey, you get, because you're a, a loyal client, you're going to get access to all my, you know, all my stuff. Um, so that I would use the content as a value add, and then I would try to sell premium coaching. All right. And, uh, and if you do that, by the way, the, the model that Jeff's talking about is a whole lot less um, technologically encumbering, you don't need nearly the technology to support custom coaching because that can be done on a Zoom call, right? That's right. That's right. Yeah. It's an easier start. And again, you know, I have 5% of my buyers that have come to workshops where they've, I've got 5% of my buyers have probably given me five to $20,000 over the course mm-hmm. of a couple of years. Right. So if you're, if you're a chiropractor and you have 20 clients, I'm sure two or three of them will give you a lot of money if you offered them something more. And so for whatever, that's where you start. You start top and you don't, you don't start wide. You start yeah. top and, you, and then you can go down. I sat next to a woman on a, a plane one time, Jeff, on a Southwest flight. And she's wearing a Bon Jovi shirt. I said, oh, Bon Jovi fan? She's like, yeah. I've been to every one of his concerts. And I said, oh, really? Every time he comes to Vegas? And she like paused and looked at me and said, every one of his concerts. She's seen Bon Jovi live like 211 times or something. And I, it just made me realize, no matter who you are, Jeff Salzenstein, is, like Bon Jovi, they want, there's somebody out there, a few people that want everything that you sell or offer. Right. They've watched every one of your YouTube videos and then bought every one of your products and would let, and would buy them again if you'd let them. <laughs> you know? Right. That's right. And then want to go to the workshop and want to meet you. If you do a, you know, pints, uh, pints at a, and we're doing a beer tasting after our tennis lessons this, you know, Friday in Denver, they'll be there. Yeah. Yeah. Think about how you could create Whatever your program, whatever your signature program could be, what, what is the thing that makes you different? How do you help people get to the next level with their, their body, their health, their nutrition, weight loss, whatever it is? And think about how you could create an eight-week program, uh, a transformation program. That's what you want to be thinking about creating videos for and content for. And you could have videos on mindset. You could have videos on nutrition and, and rehab and prehab and strength. I mean, Sleep. It's amazing. I mean, a lot of sleep. people ask about sleep, sleep and nobody Meditation. actually has a, yeah. how, to, how to go about it, you know? All of it. So there's, yeah. there's a lot of stuff, a lot of good stuff there. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a big world. It's only going to, it's only the digital world. It's, it, if you're not on it yet, get on it because more and more money you're going to be doing, especially with the coronavirus at the time of this 
we're filming this thing, I don't think people are going to go outside anymore. They're just going to be online buying stuff, you know, on, you know, buying it. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, Jeff, <laughs> just one last thing. I know that okay. people are listening. Probably they're a little intimidated. Like, Oh my God, yeah. I thought I'd do this. There's 18,000 steps. What if they could search one video of you in your lowest tech version early on so they can see like you're talking about everything you've built, but take us back to a start. Is there a certain YouTube video that you think is like the quintessential seed that started this whole thing? And we can see that, Hey, it's not perfect. It, it, you, but you have to take action. You just have to step out there and, and you know, yeah, you, you want to surf, to you got to dive in the waves. Two things I would recommend. You got to start with something with an action step and two, try to find a coach or a mentor. Don't try to do it alone. Who so do you recommend? Minute? I mean, I think Troy Broussard's an uh, incredible Troy's, one. I think he's, Troy's great. He's doing the, um, was it Learnistic or I, I think that's okay. what his program's called. Okay. But everything I've ever got from him, I've been super happy with and, and obviously love Membrant. I think it's a fantastic program. Troy's great. I would start there. I mean, I'm, again, I'm kind of past the newbie stage, so I haven't really, I don't really know who's kind of getting people started. Um, Ryan Lee was my first coach. He yeah. now has moved into selling supplements, but um, he's friends with Troy as well. Um, mm -hmm. Just really good people in that space. Uh, but in terms of my videos, I have a passion for nutrition and I thought I was going to be like a nutrition guy. So that my funny story from when I first started was I remember at my old house um, that I lived in, I sat down at the table and I put a camera in front of me with no mic and I had these uh, carton of blueberries and I did a three minute YouTube video on the power of blueberries and how important it is to eat. I made another video right after that on avocados with my holding the avocado and I really thought I was going to be a star in the world of nutrition at my kitchen table. And I quickly realized after those two videos that I probably should stick to tennis. I think I made the right choice. Um, and then my big video that kind of went viral, it's got over a half a million views. It's called the dirty diaper. So anyone who wants to go see a video from about 2011, it's called the dirty diaper. It's how to hit a kick server top spin serve. And I, and if you can come up with names for your stuff, like I've got elbow the enemy, dirty diaper. I'm going to be releasing some videos, one called the crab, another one called the phone booth. If you can come up with names for your exercises that are your own unique names, they got a chance to get some legs. If you just call mm -hmm. it the shoulder rotation drill, it's probably not going to right. happen. Yeah, but yeah. if you, if you come up with the turn the doorknob upside down with your whatever, blah, blah, blah. If it's some catchy name, people will remember it. And right. people today go, I still do the dirty diaper. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. Um, so yeah, they can, you can search on YouTube for my dirty diaper videos. Awesome. All right. Well, I really appreciate it, Jeff. Uh, if people are interested in, in tennis, uh, send them, where can they go for your website? Tennisevolution.com, great place to go. Uh, search Tennis Evolution on my YouTube channel for tons of free content. You'll get a lot of ideas there because at the end of every video, I have a call to action. I'll say like, hey, check out my free instructional course mm -hmm. inside the app. Click the link in the description below. You can follow exactly what I say, uh, model what I do with my call to action. And if anyone out there, if they do have any questions about business um, to get started with all this, I'm happy to, you know, have a chat with someone just to kind of- awesome get them started. Yeah. yeah. And if they want to, if they're a clinician who wants to learn more about assessing uh, the human body for tennis, they can find you at a racket fit seminar, right? Yeah. We have a couple of racket fit seminars this year. Again. Yeah. If you have tennis clients, it is definitely the go-to seminar. I'm not just saying this, it's a wonderful program and uh, we're just trying to get the word out. And if somebody goes to racket fit seminar and they bring a carton of blueberries and two avocados, can they sit down at the bar. I mean, it's not really going to be the bar because obviously you're too much of a uh, performance. Uh, you're perfect. I haven't had machine. a sip of alcohol since March 19th of last year. All right. Uh, because I decided to do a 30 day challenge and that 30 day challenge has become 360 day challenge. But cool. uh, yes, if they bring the blueberries and the avocado, I will give them a uh, free 10 minute business co speed coaching session. Mm -hmm. And I'll also show them how to get in the trophy position at the racket fit seminar. There you go, baby. Well, I can't imagine that somebody would need more than that in their life to really achieve right. That's perfection. All they need. So, yeah. all right. Well, on behalf of Jeff, this is Dr. Josh Satterley saying, go out there, maximize your license and live the life you dream of. Jeff, thanks so much, man. Thank you. I had a blast. Thanks so much for checking out these videos. I hope they're useful. We'll cover things like rehab, exercise, business model, progressions, layout, 
everything else that helps you build a clinic. So if you're interested, you can click here, there, here, here, or anywhere to get more videos just like this. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you soon.